Welcome to a tasty preview of Sip Niagara. I'm Jeremy Parsons, and today we're going to be making three amazing Sobieski vodka cocktails, oyster stroganoff, and some super fast pierogies. So let's get started with an amazing Caesar. And of course, we're using Sobieski vodka. So this is my Polish pickle. This is a really savory and beautiful Caesar. So I've got some Sobieski vodka in there, mixing it in with some Walter Caesar mix. Next, some Worcestershire sauce. Then I'm gonna add in some Halo Heat's spicy dill pickle. This really gives it the flavor. I'm gonna shake this bad boy up because I love shaking my Caesar. Getting it nice and well combined. And then I'm gonna show you a really cool trick to rill. So I've got some Dennis's horseradish. I'm gonna wipe this through and just get all those great horseradish juices and bits. So here's a little tip. If you wanna add some nice savoriness to the pairings, add in a little bit of seasoning onto your rim or into your cocktail. So I'm using Fire in the Kitchen steak rub. I'm gonna pour this bad boy in. Already I can smell that beautiful dill pickle. Now, of course, when you're at our Caesar bar, you've got 186 different ingredients, so choose wisely, but this is a nice one. Let's taste. Oh, the aromatics and the flavors really come together. That's a beautiful cocktail. So, enough drinking, we gotta start working. So we're gonna start shucking our oysters. I've got some great oysters here from PEI. And I'm going to start shucking. Now what you want to do is always make sure that your oysters are nice and cold and keep them on a bed of ice because they are alive and you need to keep them alive. If they start to open up, you need to get rid of them because the gases that come out of those oysters will kill all the rest of them. So I'm using an offset shucking knife. And what you want to do is just look for the joints and then scrape it off the shell, give it a smell, remove it from the muscle, and then you're really good. So I'm gonna show you once again because it is pretty quick. So again, we've got these beautiful oysters. Place the towel over top, grab your shucking knife, and you're gonna feel for that little joint. You wanna get it right in there. And then start to twist just a bit and you'll feel the cap pop. And then gently pull your blade all the way through the shell. Be careful not to scrape the shell because we don't wanna get any shards in there. So again, I'm just gonna remove it off the muscle and smell it. it. Smells amazing, it's so nice and briny and fresh. I'm gonna continue shucking, throw some of our tri-tip steaks on the grill and start getting these oyster stroganoff together. Here's a great tip. I've infused some olive oil with my favorite Walter Caesar rim. And then I'm just gonna drizzle this over our tri-tip steaks before we toss them on the grill. Our tri-tip steak is looking amazing on the grill. We just wanna sear it nice and hot, lock in that flavor so we can toss it in rare into the stroganoff sauce with the mushrooms and the leeks. Our steaks are looking amazing. I'm just gonna flip them over and we've got two more minutes to go. So we've got our steak right off the grill and we're gonna start chopping up our leeks. I love leeks. They just build so much flavor because they are from the garlic family. So we get that onion and garlic kind of tang and it just gives some beautiful texture. They also like to roll away off the uh, board. <laughs> but when you're cooking leeks, I'm using the tender bits, although I'm sure if you've seen me cook before, I like to use a lot of the uh, forgotten greens, as they call them, which are the big green leafy tips. I'm not using that for this because I want it to be a little bit more delicate. If I was doing a pasta, then I would definitely add in those forgotten greens. So we've got our leeks. Our cremini and portobello mushrooms are all nice and chopped up now. And we're gonna throw them into a pan with some butter. We're gonna add in a beautiful Syrah from Creekside. And we're gonna saute those with a little bit of Worcestershire. And then we're adding in the exact same rim that we put on our Caesar. So we're gonna throw a little bit of that in there and then get it to reduce, throw in some sour cream, some pickles, and then that baby is just gonna simmer for a little while until it's ready and then we'll add in the steak. So let's add these into our pan and then we're gonna be making up our next cocktail. Our pan is perfect. We're gonna add in our mushrooms and leeks, get them nice and golden brown before we put in our beautiful Syrah, a little bit of chicken stock, and then finally our sour cream to thicken it up. So 
So when you're adding in your sour cream, you wanna make sure that you're using full fat sour cream and stirring it in until it's well combined. You don't want it to separate. That is the biggest key. So you're taking cold sour cream, putting it into a hot pan, stir it, stir it, stir it until it's very well combined. And of course, you've gotta take a little taste. This needs a little bit more sour cream and a little more seasoning, and then we're gonna be perfect. So let's let this simmer for a little bit longer, probably about 10 minutes, make another cocktail and start making those pierogies. So our stroganoff is just simmering away right now and it smells amazing. So now we're gonna make our super fast pierogies, but first we gotta make another cocktail. So I'm gonna show you how to make the perfect mule. So I'm using Kara Kara orange, which is just gorgeous. If you can see right here, it's almost like in between a grapefruit and a tangerine. So it's got sweetness and a little bit of sour. Two slices of lime, two ounces of Sobieski vodka, maybe a little bit more. And I shake mine up because what happens is that there's a chemical reaction between the alcohol and the pith and the peel and the essential oil. So it really builds some amazing aromatics and flavor. And it's just that little bit of friction and a whole lot of effort that makes it taste absolutely amazing. Oh, and you get all those wonderful, sweet and sour citrus smells. And then we're gonna top it off with some fruit tree ginger beer. And this is the perfect mule. Mmm, so refreshing. Awesome cocktail. So I'm Ukrainian. My grandmother was an amazing baker. I'm gonna be using wonton wrappers. I'm not making my own dough. Hers was perfection, I'm not even gonna bother trying. So I've got some boiled potatoes here. I'm gonna add in some Walter's Caesar rim for our seasoning. And just when you think that you've got enough, add two more shakes. We are gonna be putting these into boiling water and we don't wanna lose the flavor. So now I've got some wild garlic scapes. These are beautiful, they're nice and warm. I've sauteed them, I've kept all the olive oil. I'm gonna drop all of that in there as well. Next, I'm gonna add in some fresh dill. I'm just gonna tear it up. And then we're gonna mash this together and then start putting together our pierogies. So while you're mashing, you may see that you might need a little bit of olive oil. I'm using olive oil, a lot of people like to use cream, but I'm gonna use olive oil to be able to sort of break it up a little bit more, break down the starchiness, and also make it a little bit more malleable. The other thing is, is that once it starts to cook, the olive oil acts like a glue and helps to keep the pierogies together and to seal the wontons, whereas if you add cream or butter, it really doesn't do it. So I'm gonna add in some nice olive oil a healthy dose, and then mash this up. So we're gonna leave it a little bit chunky, but we want it to be very well combined before we add it into the wrappers. This is looking pretty darn good, and it's gonna be easy to work with, which is exactly what we want. We don't want any big chunks, we just want it well combined, but not too smooth so it starts to ooze out. It needs to kind of hold that texture and shape, and that's looking good. Oh, plus it smells amazing. A nice rustic look. Okay, so let's start getting these wontons done. Let's make some room. And here we go. Wontons are terrific, but the biggest thing is you have to be using water. If they dry out, they're no good to you. So I like using a bamboo board. It helps to sort of add a little bit of humidity and moisture. And now I'm gonna lay these guys down. So you wanna lay them out in a nice little triangular pattern. And then we are going to add in our filling. Actually, these guys are a little bit dry. So I'm just gonna add a little bit and then keep your hands wet as well. And there we go. So let's just kind of give a little bit of room for work in here. And then let's add in our filling. So you're just gonna add in a little bit into the center and we're gonna fold them over like a little triangle. And don't worry, you're gonna start to see exactly how much fits in your fingers to make the perfect one. And we're just gonna roll them over. And the biggest thing is, is to make sure that you're closing off the sides. And you're gonna see what I mean by closing off the sides. So we're gonna start like this, press at the corner, slide your fingers down, and boom, we've got a perfect one. Let's try this again. So you're gonna press it right over, connect at the corner, slide it down, and boom, 
golden. See, it's that easy. I know it's crazy. So then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna continue on with this and we're gonna house them on a plate with a little bit of parchment paper. This helps to wick away any sort of additional moisture so it doesn't get too soggy and it helps it to stick together. Then we're gonna pop these into some boiling water and as soon as they float up, they are done and it takes only about 25 seconds for that, which is pretty incredible. Then you can fry them up, you can separate them and freeze them, use them for another day, but I mean, who wants to wait for another day? But look at these guys, super beautiful instant pierogies. Okay, let's throw these into boiling water and then the big reveal. So we're gonna drop our pierogies in. Literally, this is gonna take 20 seconds. It's unbelievable how quick they cook. So our oyster stroganoff are straight out of the oven with our tri-tip steak on top. Our flash pierogies are all done. Our Caesar, our best mule in the world. And then next is the cleanest, dirty martini you're ever gonna see. So when you're chilling a martini glass, always use ice, but I like to use soda water. The bubbles help to actually invigorate the glass and get it colder faster. Next, in a shaker half full of ice, I'm gonna add in two huge olives. No olive juice, olives. Then I'm gonna show you a bartender's trick. You count to three and you got an ounce. So right there, we've got two ounces. Right there, we've got three ounces. And I'm gonna shake this bad boy up nice and hard so it pulverizes those olives. And just like what we did with that mule, it's gonna break down those essential oils and just mix it together. So we're not getting that sort of vinegary, we're not getting in the oil, we're just getting the olives, which is exactly what you want in a perfect dirty martini. Oof, and I can feel it by the shaker that that is perfect. We're gonna strain it out with a Hawthorne shaker like we do. And there we go, everybody. That was a little preview of some of the flavors that you can savor at this year's Ship Niagara with Sobieski Vodka. I'm Jeremy Parsons, and I look forward to sipping with you. Cheers. Oh, perfect.